Y'all got your drink, fellas. Got my drink. It was like, ooh, our lips look so good. I got good everything, trust What else you got good, Al? <laughs> Take a look at that picture I sent you. Ooh. I just figured I'd get the girls a little preview <laughs> of the spring summer collection, a.k.a. Okay. my body. It is TGIF. This is what y'all came for, right? Y'all came for this. Hey everybody, it's your girl Claudia Jordan and we are back with our Wednesday edition of TGIF with two of my favorite fellas in the game. Let me, you know what, I'm going to cut all the intros. Let's just get right to it. Please welcome brand strategist Al Reynolds. Hey Al. Uh-huh. What's up Claudia? How you why doing? Why does it feel like it's been so long? Why does it feel like, I don't know why today feels like I haven't seen you all in a while. I might be missing you too. Really? Uh-huh. I know, right? That's so adorable. I'm sure you won't be missing us at the end of the show after we have our shady moments. <laughs> Please welcome multimedia personality, Funky Dineva. Hey, Q. Don't say hey to me. I feel some kind of way about you and Al both. Both of y'all are on my hit list tonight. Oh, okay. why? Soulmates. You see how Claudia did upgraded her camera? Now, first Al popped on with the upgraded digital everything. Then Claudia popped on tonight. I'm just using my little camera off my MacBook. They got me out here looking like the little project child. <laughs> waiting on Joe Biden to give me some technology money or whatever. <laughs> they, they, they told me nothing, ain't sent me the links, and said, friend, this is what we doing this week. Oh, but y'all wait. Okay, baby, because come Friday, I'm going to have it all going on. <laughs> you notice a difference? Is it a difference? It looks no, better. it looks good. Your video looks good. very good. Listen, I've been doing this show, these shows for almost two years, and I have been tired of looking at myself, looking grainy. But now I got to step up my makeup because I would get away with doing a lot of raggedy makeup jobs on myself. But now I see it's like high definition, so I can't get away with that. So we gonna, mm-hmm. I'm going to send you the link and all the info to get everything that I got so we can all Good. be on the same page until Good. we get into studio. Right, Jamesy Buzz? That part. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all, um, it's Wednesday, so I want y'all to describe how you're feeling, okay? Describe your mood in three words. Whoever wants to go first. Tired, used, and abused. <laughs> it was my birthday weekend. Oh, that's oh, right. Oh, that's so right. What, did, you, did you do anything special for your birthday? You know, I had, to show, I had to show Friday night, so that kept me from doing the proverbial birthday dinner or whatever. We went on the water for six hours on Saturday. And then from that up until two nights ago, it's just been like one drunken dinner after another. So I am all drank, drunk out, drank out. I don't want to see no liquor. Um, I'm actually thinking about going on a 30 day liquor detox. Um, But y'all pray for me. We might have to do a modified version though and just do beer and wine and give up hard liquor. But after this weekend, I definitely need to detox. Do <laughs> you get any birthday sex on your birthday? I had oh. got a little bit. I had got a little bit twice. <laughs> twice? Twice. twice. Mm-hmm, I did. But get out of my business. It's not that type of show. Yeah, it sure the fuck. It sure the hell is. <laughs> we, listen, we give it to Al every single week, and people be in the comments. Y'all ganging up on Al. You don't try that with QQ. Are you in love this week? I am here to spread other people's tea, not mine. <laughs> All right, we gonna, you know what? We, we're gonna get to you later on. Okay, Al, um, describe your uh, your mood right now in in three days. I mean, in three words. Ooh. Okay, I'm going to use blessed, blessed, and blessed. And those are my three words. I mean, I, I'm feeling really blessed to be honest with you. I just, I'm, I don't know what it is. I'm feeling emotional. I'm feeling like blessed. I'm just blessed. That's right. That was so easy and basic. <laughs> blessed, blessed, and blessed. No, no thought, no ingenuity, no creativity. I know, I, I tried, I tried. <laughs> So he just gave us he just gave us that lazy leg too. Right? Lazy, lazy church leg. answer. Old class <laughs> appreciation answer. <laughs> I'ma say motivated. Okay. Um, I feel uh like I'm a good girlfriend because I actually had a good little night last night. And I'm um I'm happy. I got some things, some some iron some fires in the iron right now. Iron's in the fire. Yes, irons in the fire, mm-hmm. and uh, I'm happy about that. So I'm someone that always needs to have something to look forward to, or I get depressed, and I've, okay. I battled depression in the past. So I'm like in a good place right now. So yeah, good. I'm good. good. We good. All right, what's everybody sipping on tonight? 
So I switched over to red wine. So I'm having I'm having a red wine. Let me see who is it by. The lineage red from Napa Valley. I hope you okay. don't waste it on that pretty sweater you got going. Uh, you got on. I am drinking. Y'all know me. Publix lemonade mixed with Publix <laughs> tea. <laughs> you need a Publix endorsement. Mm-hmm. You do. Mm-hmm. I'm just drinking water. I'm being. I'm being basic tonight um, because I'm. I'm trying to like lose this weight, and I'm tired of having a fupa because I do not want to have a fupa. Fupas are not cute. I don't want a fupa. So here we are. I got to just make some sacrifices. All yeah. right. Aren't there like? Aren't there like white? vodkas either rice or potato that you can drink that has no calories no sugar so think about that google that but then you have to drink it straight oh i should put a little lime a little lime a little ice i don't i have an addictive i'm i have a real addictive personality so i just have to cut things cold turkey or i I have to cut the craving for it like i can't like i have to cut sugar and and cut anything that tastes sweet you know what i mean because it's I just don't have the willpower when it comes to food and alcohol and gambling. So anyways, moving on, let's get into it. Al Reynolds, uh, over the weekend, you stepped out yes. and represented Fox Soul at the 2021 Saturday Night Celebrity Beat the Pros versus the Bowie State University ladies softball team at right. uh, Bay Sox Stadium. In case you didn't know, Bowie State is the oldest HBCU in the state of Maryland. Uh, tell us about that event. How was it? And I saw you representing for us. Ah, Claudia, let me tell you, that that's one of the, the reasons why I still, I'm still high about that weekend, totally blessed. Um, like you said, Bowie State University is one of the oldest HBCUs in Maryland, one of the oldest 10 of the, one of the 10 of the oldest in all of HBCUs in the country. Um, it was just a great event. The band was out. It was like almost like homecoming. The band was out. The majorettes were out. They had their dances. The cheerleaders were out. Um, on the team that I played on, I played on the pros team. So we had 16 former NFL and NBA players. Um, shout out to Bowie State University students and family and friends. They were so welcoming. They really are uh, watching our show, which was really exciting. Of course, they asked about Claudia and Funky. Um, shout out to the president, Dr. Um, Bro, and shout out to uh, Dr. Kenny Gray, who organized it. And shout out to Dr. Rita Lewis. We had an amazing time. All right. You know what? And I, I, I love that you're out there doing things representing Foxhole and yourself. And I love that more people are like, you know, reaching out and checking for you, Al. Cause like I've known how dope you are for a long time, so I love that other people are finally catching up. Uh, we you, didn't, you, you didn't bring us no, you didn't bring us no clips or no pictures, Al. I think I did. I mean, what's going on back here with the producers? I, I definitely brought a clip back, so maybe we'll get to that. So this is the Bowie State University women's softball team woo! right here. This is woo. This is the reason why we're here. We're supporting these beautiful ladies. We have the band. We have the majorettes. We have the cheerleaders. All for these ladies right here. And we're also here to raise some money for them so that they'll be able to have an amazing season. Rock the monkey go. Rock the monkey go. Stop. And let Fox so do it. Rock the monkey go. 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 Rock the go. <laughs> wow, Al. Okay, you're pretty good at that. But we stay that okay. Really makes me smile to see that because I know that this isn't like your past. This is your it's your lane now, but it hasn't right. been historically. Right. Uh, this really makes me feel good to see you. <laughs> Learning from two of the best, but but oh Claudia, guess what else happened? My sister, um, my two sisters came up because my sister is a World Series softball player. She won two championships. So my two sisters pulled me aside and they were like, come here, we need to talk to you for a second. So guess what they shared with me? They shared with me that um, I owe you an apology. Um, my sister said that when you're on a panel and you're you're and she's the only woman, Claudia is the only woman. I have to be more respectful to you and your feelings and your thoughts. So they said that they felt like that I was a little bit out of bounds the other night <laughs> with you and that I wasn't very um, sensitive to understanding what you were saying, even though I didn't agree that I should at least offer you the fact that I have ears to hear and I should be more understanding. So I apologize. I apology accepted, Al. We apologize to each other, and that's a sign of maturity and real friends, actually. <laughs> we, don't need no Megan McCain. we don't need no Megan McCain and Whoopi Goldberg going over here. <laughs> 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 My good shit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 
All right, so, hey, the, the, in the chat, they're saying I look a little orange and yellow. Is that true? Do I need to fix my light? No, you look fine, girl. Because they're saying yeah. I look real yellow and orange. Hold on. If I'm going to be fly, I'm going to be all the way fly. I don't know. I'll, I'll fix it. I'll fix it during the commercial. All right. Oh, without okay. further ado, let's get into some hot topics. All right. Let me put my glasses on for this. I'm over. Okay. Shikari is uh, trending again after placing last at the uh, Prefontaine Classic. Now, Delroy Allen, he's the owner and managing director of T uh, Takuma Boutique Hotel. That's in Montego Bay. Now, she off he offered the track star a free vacation to slow down and regroup. Ellen said that Shikari is talented, but she's also a troubled athlete in deep pain. She is desperately in need of a spiritual and emotional renewal. And that offering was a vacation. The vacation was the Christian thing to do. Shikari responded back to the offer with a throwback picture in the caption, been there, done that. Now, was the owner of the hotel, hotel being shady or was he just, you know, was it just a nice gesture? And what do y'all think? Baby, if Shay was all expense paid, <laughs> flew it out to Jamaica. You know, at first I thought it was a little shady based on the fact that she got smoked by them Jamaicans. But after reading his commentary, just something in my spirit told me that it was genuine. At least it felt genuine in his explanation. Um, and you know what? Mama could use a small little spiritual retreat after everything that she's going through and hopefully tag, let somebody go along with her, an adult one of her coaches that can just really sit down and pour into her and help her get her mind right. I know everybody's talking about she's young, she's young, she'll get it, she'll get it. Well, now is the time for her to start getting it. And I think that that'd be a great way to kick off her getting it. Okay, Al, what do you think? Man, I don't know. The way I read it, I thought it was uh, it was it was opportunistic. I thought that it was definitely shady. I thought that everybody was definitely going to be talking about her coming in last place, and them making that offer was just a part of jumping on that media cycle. Um, but you know what? I, I feel like she should take it, and she probably does need to regroup after this humiliation. Um, this young lady is going through a very public humiliation, and not only just in the United States but around the world, you know, but like I have this saying that God either checks you in public, I mean, in private, or he checks you in public. And this clearly she's being checked in public coming in last. It's just got to be one of the most humiliating things that she's ever experienced in her athletic career. I think, and uh, I have a little bit of uh, experience in the, um, passive aggressive shady department i've been known to <laughs> say a shady thing or two i think it was like i, I saw him okay i see uh -huh. you, my my guy it was a way to say what you're saying that whoever wants to take it a shade keep it like, oh that's shade jamaica for a vacation the same team that whooped you and it was also if it, it, it was a perfect you know kind of like offer because he can also say what, what do you mean right who me I right. didn't mean it at that. I was just right. being a Christian and offering her this. I think he accomplished both things. And mm -hmm. depending on what side of the fence you stand on, you can take it either way. But mm -hmm. I recognize passive shade when I see yeah. it because I do it all the time. Right. It was clever, though. It was clever. Very clever. Uh, it got us looking up this boutique resort. Right. Um, it, 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 it worked. It was very smart marketing. Okay. All right. We, and, and I wish Shakari, if you're listening, even your response, like, don't been there, done that piece. Thank you. Uh, maybe I'll take you up on, on uh, in the future. Not to tell you what to do, but I guess I just did. But it, 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 it just just added to that arrogant stereotype that we want her to get away from. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, my opinion. All right. OK, we got to get into this story in a recent gotta interview. Get into a commercial girl. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to take a quick break. And I guess I need another pair of glasses so I can see that. Oh, we'll be right back. We'll be right back. We are back with TGIF with our Reynolds, Funky Dining of and myself, Claudia Jordan. And uh, all right, let's get into the story. Recent interview with The Breakfast Club, Lil Boozy shared his thoughts on recent controversy surrounding Lil Nas X. Oh, Lord, here we go. Uh, oh, here Boosie we go. was asked if he thought he went too far with his last comment about Lil Nas X. And he said... He would drag his ass off stage and beat his ass. Boosie said, I got to speak up because as far as straight people in the world, you don't have any opinion no more on sexuality. Everything is harm. 
The rapper also said that Little Nas X and rappers like him are attacking our children. He then clarified his statement by explaining that he has nothing against his gay he has nothing against gay people because his tour manager is gay. What are your thoughts on Lil Boozy's statements? Mm. And I have a choice to make in this moment. And it's <laughs> Do I choose violence or do I choose to love? <laughs> I'm just so exhausted when it comes to this. So I think I'm going to choose the Lord. I'm going to choose the oh. Lord. Okay. For those of you guys out there who always want to say it's just an opinion, it's not homophobic. What do you call it when somebody says they will drag you off the stage and beat your ass? If that's not homophobia, I don't know what is. And you would drag him off the stage and beat his ass for doing what? The same thing that you are freely able to do in your heterosexual life? I'm just tired of this conversation as it relates to Boosie. And the larger question is, why is Boosie so preoccupied with homosexuality? That's the question. I need y'all to understand. It's easy for me to understand the homophobia. Why has he made it his life's mission to be little Nas X's arch nemesis and the anti-homosexuality activist? Riddle me that. Uh, beyond that, I have nothing for Boosie. Trying to talk to the likes of Boosie is like talking to a parked car. It's just, it's just a complete waste of time. Talking to him is like talking to them, race, them racist Trumpsters they just are who they are. They're willfully ignorant. They don't want to hear no other perspective. They're too stupid to analyze any other perspective. And you just have to let him have at it. So, Boosie, you know what? You can have at it. Okay. Very well said. Al, what do you think? It's, I think for me, it's the hypocrisy for me, right? Because according to him, gay artists like Little Nas that are open and honest about their queer, queer sexuality, he's saying that they're going to have a negative influence on the younger generation. And he said the way the media is forcing it down the straight's throat is really causing him concern and pause because he, he feels like it will affect the younger generation. Now, this is where I get confused and this is how simple my mind is now he grew up in the same generation I grew up so the media's portrayal of like the Cosby show the media's portrayal of good times fresh prince of bel-air where we saw wives and families in the family unit together as one was what the media used to influence me when I was growing up and he's around my same age however He's got 10 kids, eight baby mamas. He raps about violence and guns. I mean, it's the hypocrisy there for me. So how can you say that the media is using the homosexuals and, and, and artists like Little Nas to, to, to influence a generation, right? A generation of young kids when the media used shows like The Cosby Show and influenced me in a good way, but you, it didn't influence you of the family values that well. So to me, that's where I get confused with him. And like you, why is he talking about this every week? Is he talking about it because he's really concerned? Is he talking about it because he's getting more than his 15 minutes? Or is he talking about it because he wants attention? I, I, I just don't know. Well, we, I think he's talking about it because this is the most anyone has talked about him in a long time. I don't, I, listen, I, I may be wrong and someone can leave me a comment in the, you know, a message in the comments. When's the last time his music was really popping? So mm -hmm. he's getting a lot of attention because every time he talks about this, it trends on social media and every talk show is talking about this. I, I think this, listen, two things can be true at the same time. You can have an opinion. You sure can. But when you talk about whooping someone's ass because they're gay and right. the example that sets, that sets, while meanwhile, you're doing all the things that Al said, you kind of, it's, it's kind of like we can hear some of your message, but not from you, not mm -hmm. from you. If it was someone like um, uh, Will Smith, you know, someone with a clean reputation that can like, you know, we can't say, well, what about you? We can maybe receive some of the things you're saying, but you just say it so ignorantly and it takes away right. from any valid points because sometimes he does make valid points on things. But right. you can't say one thing and say, oh, they're doing all this bad stuff and then threaten to literally assault an artist for just living out loud. It doesn't make sense, Boosie. And I, I feel like, do you not see how it's coming off? 
because there's a lot of street folks, like like street brothers. That's like, and I, forgive me if I'm using the wrong term. Y'all be mad about that. That say, yo, I rock with what he's saying. Yo, he real when he's speaking for the straight folks. Right. But you lose your credibility when you talk about fighting someone. Period. Point blank. Right. Do y'all agree with that? And then, and and and, and, I, and I hate I hate the double back around the block. Cause it's the proverbial I have black friends. Oh, I don't have anything against gay people. My tour manager gay. You know, my right. stylist is gay. But you literally just said in, in the sentence prior that you would whoop his ass. You would drag him off stage and whoop his ass. And I'd be more, I, you know, I, I would love to sit down and pick his brain. Whoop his ass for what, sir? Right. What is that solving? Is the question. Like, like but but why? Because you can't say. I'm not homophobic. It's just my opinion, but I'll right. beat your ass. Make right. it make sense. And uh, adding to the conversation, it's the people that come forward and choose to like die on this hill, I guess, or fight on this hill. Jocelyn Hernandez says she agrees with Boosie about his take on not allowing kids to be exposed to that kind of content. So Again, it's the messenger. Like, yeah, that's that's great, Jocelyn. I, I agree, you know. But like, does your child know the stuff that you do on television? Because it is a terrible look. Right. She need to go sit her Rosetta Stone in need of having <laughs> illiterate ass down somewhere because that piece of crap, garbage, sewage, biohazardous ass waste show that she has on Zeus Network has set black women, Latina women, and women of color back nine hundred decades. Okay, that. Right. Y'all don't get me rolled up. I'm not going to choose violence. I am choosing the Lord. Somebody put on <laughs> I know we should move on, but like, it's just the people that are coming forward against this is mind blowing. But you know what? It also proves one thing that they don't, to, to be honest, and the reason why I stopped getting infuriated, Boosie and Jocelyn Hernandez, no tea, no shade, do not have the intellectual range to even have this conversation. And right. that's just the true tea. And, and people right. who like them, who have these same opinions, quite frankly, they don't have the intellectual range to even have the conversation. So it really doesn't mean much coming from the baby, Lil Boosie, and Jocelyn Hernandez, who's stingy with her cootie cat. It, 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 I cannot... I could not. I'd like to invite Lil Boosie onto TGIF to have that conversation. See if you do have the intellectual range to have this conversation with us. And this is not a hostile invitation. This is an honest invitation. So if anyone's following him that knows him, shoot him this clip. We would love to have you on and talk to you about this because I feel like if we don't have this conversation, if you don't have a real conversation with someone, it's going to keep on looking like just a clout chasing moment, although you don't need clout, but it just right. seems like an attention seeking moment. All right. I'll put it out there. All right, uh, Karuchi Tran has been uh, thriving in her career. She's been doing her thing. She was the first Asian American and uh, Pacific Islander to win the Emmy for Best Actress in a Daytime Television Series. Now, for those that don't know, her mother is Vietnamese and her father is African American, and he's also gay. She recently opened up about being raised in Los Angeles, mainly by her mother and grandmother. The actress shared that she found out that her father was gay when she was in middle school, but she actually realized something was different when she was in elementary school. Do you think it's stressful on children who are raised by parents who identify with LBGTQ? Or do you think it's just, that's just their reality? They don't even see a difference. I think the latter. I mm -hmm. think oftentimes as adults in that society, we put more stank on things that need to be. And we project our own fears and insecurities onto children. Children are more resilient than we give them credit for. Children are smarter then we give them credit for. Children are aware that something is going on in your marriage before your ass is aware of it. They are very perceptive. It's the only defense mechanism that they are biologically equipped with, intuition and perception. Children are very smart. And when it's their baseline, absolutely not. And people always say, how do you explain this to the children? How do you explain the same way you explain a heterosexual relationship? You just do. You just be. It's all they know. And it doesn't become a thing. Um, so I'm, I'm happy she shared this story. And what folks don't realize is that it's more common than you think. There are a lot of people that you went to school with who've had gay parents. Al, what do you think? I think it depends on where you live. 
I mean, I think different areas are more accepting and understanding than other areas. Like for instance, in New York City, um, you know, it's cool that they have, like some of the kids have two fathers or two mothers or, but if you tried that say in somewhere in Alabama or even where I'm from, Horse Pass of Virginia, you're gonna get looked at sideways. You're gonna be teased by your, 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 uh, classmates. I mean, it's just, a, it's the nature of the beast, in my opinion. However, this is one thing that I'm loving about this sexuality movement is that now it's becoming spoken about. It's not um, hidden behind a curtain or swept under a rug. And because we're having these conversations, then people are forced to understand their feelings and be more accepted. So that I do appreciate. And as it relates to Karuchi, maybe that's one of the reasons why she has such a creative side of her that she's been able to win an Emmy. And she's only, what, been acting for the last 10 years and has a very promising um, acting career. It could be because of her father's influence. Okay. I, I, I'm a fan of Karuchi. I love how she took her, what people would think would, would be 15 minutes. And she showed, yeah, you may have discovered me on the arm of Chris Brown, but I'm way more than that. And she has sustained mm -hmm. herself for years. And she's also still a sweetheart. All right, moving on. Uh, Real Housewives, well, former Real Housewives of Atlanta star Peter Thomas seems to be in hot water again. His bank accounts have been frozen and he owes money to the employees of his popular lounge bar one. Now, Peter claims that his bank accounts were frozen by the IRS. Well, what are your thoughts on Peter trending again, once again, because of his finances? It seems like this has happened, a, you know, a few times. <laughs> I, you know, I really hate this. And when I saw this story on our sheet, I was like, dog on it. I got to talk about it. <laughs> yeah. And this man is my friend. Like Peter yeah. is my friend friend like my when my parents died call me how you doing when I go to the restaurant Peter is my friend but this is my job my friends stay in the news by financial <laughs> accounts and you know I, I, I taking it a step further being from Miami I know people who know Peter from his 90s club days when he was promoting clubs and bars in Miami and they were saying it was the same thing then that Peter Thomas just does not change his stripes when it comes to the way that he does business. Um, and it's, you know, I, I, I don't know if it's unfortunate because I will say this. Each and every time Peter hits them headlines, he come back bigger and better. He does. So I don't know if he changed his scheme, if he changed his racketeering, if he changed, if he changed the laundromat that he laundering the money through. Q. If, if Peter, don't be mad at me, brother, because I'm trying to have your back on this one. But the article say those people need their damn paycheck, and I know how hard they work at Ball One. So I, you know, I, 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 I don't know. Al, what do you think about this? Well, let me tell you something. Q, you know, Peter is a friend of mine as well, at least in my mind. We talk, we catch up. I enjoy spending time with him when I go by the bar. This is the thing. I think Peter, if nothing else, is consistent, right? <laughs> Consistently <laughs> late. Consistent. No, no. It, it, you can't say that you never heard this before, but let's, I say this. I say Peter probably need to let somebody else handle the accounting and the books and the finances and he stick to doing what he does best and that is creating an incredible space to hang out and dine in creating an incredible audience for people to come in and let their hair down and relax and have fun i mean he just really knows how to create a, a, a place to do those things and to eat well and listen on the other hand businesses have problems and especially small businesses i remember when i worked was a professor at hbcu i've had to help my hold my check a couple of times because payroll wasn't right. So, you know, there's a double side to every coin, right? Two sides to every coin. But in this case, he is consistent. He just needs to get somebody to take care of the finances. I think it's going to be, it's real easy for people on social media who don't have a pot to piss into come for Peter. But the fact is Peter has, has a beautiful restaurant in a very high value, mm -hmm. high real estate value mm -hmm. part of Miami, mm -hmm where to even get that you had to be doing something right. And also you got to keep in, you know, keep in mind that we are going in and out of a pandemic and things are just not what they used to be right now. Mm -hmm. Now, yes, it hasn't, didn't just start with the pandemic. It, there's been problems before that, but the restaurant business from what I hear is one of the most difficult businesses to be successful at period. 
especially right. Miami, things come and go all the time. So I'm, well, I'm not dragging Peter on this. I'm, I'm not going to drag him. As long as it's your money that you're losing and, and not anyone else's, like I, it's all good. And I believe it's, it's, it's just him now. You know what I mean? So Peter, we wish you the best. I like your spot. My girl, Jessica used to work there as a hostess and uh, we would love to pull up the boat when we all were there boating with Funky Dine yeah. one day and That's come right. back to your spot. All right. Good luck, Peter. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be back with more TGIF when we come back. Welcome back to TGIF. Now, if you're enjoying the show, give us some thumbs up in the comments. And you know what? Also, please like the video. We need, the, we need those likes to get up. So please like this video right now. All right. Uh, okay. I'll cut right to the chase. I I've been feeling really amazing these days. I have a lot more energy. I feel lighter. I get a good night's sleep and I wake up every day feeling super refreshed. So what's my secret? It's Ready Slim's Detox Teas. Now, Ready Slim's Detox Teas are made with high quality, 100% organic herbs that gently boost your metabolism and help digestion. Also, they reduce bloating and gas. Now I've added this healthy lifestyle and I've already feel pounds lighter. I need to get a few more pounds. I'm gonna keep on going. Now Ready Slim Detox Teas are made with no fillers and no additives and no laxatives. So they're really safe and easy to drink daily. Ready Slim's 28 day detox tea, detox tea kit has everything you need the Wakey Wakey Morning Detox Tea helps boost your energy levels to start your day off right. And their Snoozy Night Detox Tea helps you relax and supports the natural detox process while you get your well-deserved beauty sleep. And the best part of Ready Slim is how it aids in weight loss. Plus, it's keto-friendly. Now, I'm sleeping better at night and my energy, I don't know if you noticed, is on point. So say hello to a better, brighter you. And right now, for a limited time, you can save 25% on your first order of Ready Slim's 28-day detox tea kit, plus get a free collapsible water bottle. So go to readyslim.com slash tea and use code T. That's readyslim.com slash tea, code T, and you'll save 25% off your first purchase of Ready Slim's 28-day detox tea kit. Plus, you get that, like I said, that free collapsible water bottle. ReadySlim.com slash T, code T. We'll be right back with more TGIF. Welcome back to TGIF. I'm your girl, Claudia Jordan. I'm joined by Al Reynolds and Funky Dineva. Y'all have a good time tonight? Y'all enjoying the show? <laughs> that was a question. Oh, to us? Yeah, I'm enjoying it. <laughs> All right, y'all. Uh, Steph Curry's parents, did you see about this? They are divorcing, and they're both accusing each other of cheating. They're calling it quits. Uh, according to sources, Sonia filed for divorce two months ago, and the couple have both been accusing each other of cheating. Now, according to the documents, Sonia claimed that Dell, Steph Curry's daddy, has been entangled with several women throughout their marriage, and Dell is insisting that his estranged wife will not accept alimony due to her lying and living, I'm sorry, lying and living with another man only months after they agreed to live separately. But Sonia claims, you know what? I live by myself. So they've appeared to have a united front for years, um, you know, supporting their son. What do you think about couples divorcing after so much time together? And who do you think cheated first? Baby, let me tell you something. When this thing hit the news, right, I was really shocked. And the overall sentiment in the comment sections of various blogs was, this ain't our business, this they business, this they business. Then the next day, and I wondered why they, I wondered why they were getting a divorce. I figured, uh, 33 years irreconcilable differences, right? Then the next day it came out that they both were accusing each other of cheating. I said, oh baby, this thing is messy, <laughs> honey. It's messy. And so it's so funny how on Monday I was like, this not my business, but on Tuesday I wanted to know all about it. But here's the thing that bothers me, right, about this situation. Steph and Aisha Curry have done a very good job of building a very family-friendly brand that can sell anything from baby food to pampers to talcum powder to sheets, all right? And granted, this is not Steph and Aisha, but it does kind of spill over into their brand, and it just looks a little messy for the family brand as a whole because they have built this very, we are very family, perfect family, modern family, American dream family type of thing. So I just wish that this was not playing out in the media because it also chips away at the fact that Black people, we really want the whole Cosby life so bad in that type of representation. And every time we seem to get it or a glimpse of it, something comes along to tarnish it or undermine it. Very well said. Al, what do you think about this? 
I, I'm just I'm saddened by it because, you know, 33 years is such a such a super long time. And these two are popular fixtures in the NBA. You know, the two of them, they look good. She looks good. He looks good. They made three incredible children, two and two playing in the professional uh, in the NBA, one married to a gentleman in the NBA. Just like what a what an amazing family. But let me tell you something. How does that adage go? Or what's that saying? How you get them is how you lose them. From my understanding now, they met at Virginia Tech when she was visiting. She was doing a visit because she was a volleyball player. And at that time, he was dating someone. But when he saw her, he, you know, initiated relations with her. So, hey, I don't know. You get cheated. You cheat on somebody. They cheat on your back. That's how you how you get them. It's how you lose them. So you think well, the daddy down. I was going to say, you think Karma came back and not know her though 33 years later? Karma, real ah, messy. Ah, she ah, old ah, messy ah, bitch. Yeah, Karma, Karma can be very messy because, you know, they also said allegedly she's cheated on him with a white man, which could also be very offensive to him. I mean, I don't know. I'm just saying, Karma, bless them. Karma, bless them both. With so here go, here go my waiting to exhale moment. Would it make it better if he was black? <laughs> 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 the guy is a the former NFL player, white man of Stephen Johnson. They say he has a lot of money, uh-huh. and um, well, not that they're hurting for money. But yes, yeah, she did what you supposed to do. If you are gonna cheat, cheat up, okay. If I'm gonna right. run the risk of losing my damn family and my husband walking out on me, then I'm gonna need you to be able to pick up the slack where he dropped up. If you cause me to lose all this back here. Then I'm gonna need you to be able to replace it and then some. You see, it's some right. other little dumb, dumb little girls that go out there and cheat with the pool boy and and and, and the, the man that work at Schlotsky's Deli or the Starbucks barista. Mm-hmm. Or like J Lo be right here messing with background dancers. If you go <laughs> cheat, cheat up, okay? Make sure that man can replace everything you lose if your husband find out. I don't understand how he's going to argue that she's not going to get any alimony, though. That was 33 years, three kids later. I, I don't know how he's going to argue that. That's going to be interesting to watch unfold. He says because she's already living with somebody else. She's like, no, we're, we're not living together. I'm, I, I don't know him like that. Right. That's what she's doing. <laughs> so Delta Airlines, uh, the CEO, Ed Bastian, notified employees Wednesday that they will be uh, facing a $200 monthly increase in their health insurance premiums if they don't get vaccinated against COVID-19. Now, unvaccinated employees will also face other restrictions, including indoor masking effective immediately. And uh, they can all start testing everybody. Well, they're gonna be testing someone, th- them all the time. What are your thoughts on the airlines taxing their employees like this an extra $200 a month on their, on their health insurance? Do you think it's right or not? I don't think it's a matter of right or wrong. I think it's a matter of actuary science and risk management, okay? Freedom ain't free. Freedom is not free. And let's not conflate issues here. This is not employers forcing people to get the COVID vaccine because people are going to try to spin this narrative and say they're forcing people. This is not what they're doing. What they're doing is saying the numbers have come in and it shows that if somebody gets hospitalized against COVID, the insurance gets pinged for $40,000. And that's an expense that the company has to absorb. So listen, have your freedoms. Go ahead and have your freedoms, have at them. But the science has shown that people in this demographic are more likely to get this disease and are more likely to cost the company $40,000 if they're to get hospitalized. So, bitch, you don't want to get vaccinated. That's fine and well, but you pick up the cost for your hospitalization. That is only fair. It's the same science that goes into uh, um, um, uh, health insurance, if you got pre-existing conditions, if you're more prone to this, it's the same science that goes into auto insurance. If you're young, you're at more risk of getting an accident, you pay a higher premium. Unvaccinated people are at a higher risk of contracting COVID and needing to go to the hospital. You pay for the risk. Freedom ain't free. Great points. Can't argue with that. Al? Al? You know, a Q happens to be right about this. Unvaccinated at Delta, you know, they're one of the largest uh, uh, airlines 
and they employed thousands and thousands of people. And what they found is that those who were not vaccinated and did catch COVID and had complications cost the company $40,000 for each person. So they had no choice if they wanted to make payroll or if they wanted to cover health care costs for people that were, in fact, uh, hospitalized from COVID. Now, let's not act like this is anything new because President Obama back in 2010 passed the Affordable uh, Care Act. And remember, the Affordable Care Act also penalized smokers. So if you are a smoker, you pay up to 50% more. Insurers are allowed to charge 50% increase in premiums if you are a smoker. So this is no different. The reason why is because if you are a smoker and you then have uh, lung issues or heart issues, you cost a lot for the company to insure you. It costs a lot for them to insure you. So because of the Affordable Care Act, we're able to see that these pass-throughs happen from insurers to the end client, which is the insurer. In short. All right. Listen, there's no way, there's no, there's no easy solution out of this. We're just going to have to, you know, buckle up and you can't, I think some people want to have it both ways, not wearing a mask, not taking the vaccine. I don't want to pay extra on my insurance, but then when I get sick, it's like, please put me in the ICU ahead of some cancer patient. You know what I mean? And I'm hearing now that they're turning away, especially in Florida. The doctor was on CNN today talking about how we had to turn away a cancer patient because they just didn't have the beds for it. And they, they just didn't have the beds. All right. Speaking of beds, Qua Quavo and Sweetie were spotted together in New York. And fans want to know if they're back together. Now it's been five months since their very public breakup. But, but according to Hollywood Life, a music insider says Quavo has missed Sweetie since they broke up. And he's been asking to see her. Are y'all here for the reconciliation? What do y'all think? You know, I just like Sweetie. So if Sweetie is happy then I'm happy. I mean, that's really all I got on this. I just feel like at, at almost 40, I'm too far removed to even have any real opinion about the Migos and anybody that they're dating in the 20s. But I do like to win. If she's happy, I'm happy. Yeah. Yeah. With this particular story, let me tell you what interests me. If you read the article, in the article, he, he makes a quote, which really just raised my attention to something. He said, I had, lo I had love for you and disappointed you did all that. You're not the woman that I thought you were. Can someone share with me what did she do? Does anybody know what she did? Did she do something like, is he talking about, is, did she possibly leak the elevator footage? Like, I think that was. I, I know she didn't. The only thing I knew of was she did that interview with, um, uh, respectfully, that Justin, mm -hmm. that really popular show, and they were asking, you know, some kind of, you know, questions about her relationship, and she kind of popped off, got a little sassy. But that's the only thing I knew. But uh, once again, uh, she, I, I, oh, you know what? I remember there was an interview where they were saying that Justin Combs and her were flirting a little bit. Hmm. Uh -uh. I don't think he would have said I had love for you, but I'm disappointed you did all that. And he said, you're not the woman that I thought you were. I, I it's something in my gut tells me that she may have been behind the leakage of that footage that happened a year prior. And maybe she was doing that because he was, you know, not loyal or infidelity or something. What do you think? I think I'm like funky. I'm way too old to even know the details of this. Um, <laughs> I was just, I think she, I was just caught by that because he, he, it was funny how it was added into the article. So if anybody knows, hit us up in the chat. I would love to know more information about what y'all think he did, what he meant when he said that. I do like them together from what I saw surface wise. I think they, they were cute together. They seem, you know, they seem what they like. We're into each other. All right, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be back with more TGIF when we return. Welcome back to TGIF. All right, y'all. We have been talking a lot of heavy topics tonight, but I think we want to lighten the mood the last few minutes of the show. I found this story to be kind of interesting. Now, a Washington state jail is offering 10 free ramen noodle cups, which seem to be popular in prison facilities from what I heard. Now, uh, inmates are, they're giving these soups to inmates that are willing to get the vaccine. Now, to date, the Benton County Jail has already handed out 900 packs of noodles what are your thoughts on this incentive <laughs> so ghetto to get the inmates vaccinated this is some ghetto shit right here this is a, you know who this is for uh what do y'all 
if there was nothing in life that would make me give my life to white Jesus or Allah, it would be <laughs> still realizing that I am being paid in cup of noodles. I would just be like, Lord, where did my life go wrong? <laughs> I am now being incentivized with cup of noodles. But you know what? I find it socially responsible. You got to do what you... First of all, I'm surprised that they're unable to mandatorily make these inmates get the dog on shot, considering the fact that they are in such close quarters but desperate times call for desperate measures and listen i look at it this way if you could pay them prisoners and cup of noodles to get them to do that shot i'm pretty sure you could pay the low income people and food stamps to incentivize they ask to do the shot and you can incentivize the educated upper echelon and student uh loan repayment to help them dog on get the shot this sets the stage for how we can get negroes to take the shot <laughs> especially in a prison system right because they said in the, in the state of washington the uh roman roman noodles the ramen noodles ramen, ramen noodles happen to be the highest of value in the commissary right so that, i'm sorry forget the prison system you got these chicks out here having whole babies just to get an extra 200 dollars on their welfare you go to the hood and promise them help us and them people that you get them 75 extra dollars a month on them full stamp cars you watch and see them dog on covid shot injections spike up you set you a uh -huh. walmart to a family dollar baby from the cdc they will be out there now there there is a midwestern uh, um state that's doing that because they are heavily affected by it. I can't remember. I read an article where uh, one of the mayors was given actually money cues. So you're right. It does. It does incentivize them. I mean, does it gotta be ramen noodles? Can it be like money on their books? Can it be like phone time? Can it be time off their sense? I don't know. Just the ramen noodles for the COVID shot. <laughs> and you know, we can't, we can't listen. Black people, we can't, we cannot resist the sweet taste of the the savory taste of a ramen noodle packet. Right. You know what I'm saying? It just feels so stereotypical. Like give you a, might as well give us a bucket of chicken and while you're at it, that's what it feels like. I don't know. Well, that would have been a good idea. Chicken. I would have done it. I love chicken. And the best of Frankie Beverly CD. <laughs> okay, what, what, what's the next? Speaking of ghetto, <laughs> social media. And ghetto is not just for us. This, listen, I, we do not own ghetto, okay? Uh, social media is, uh, you know, just running amok with this goofy milk crate challenge. Have you seen all the injuries that are happening? Lots of injuries. Uh, rapper Snoop Dogg even called the challenge the bridge of death. Basically, the goal is to stack the milk crates, walk up them, and try to make it to the other side without the crates falling. We have videos of people from all over the world attempting to take a challenge. I hope y'all are checking it out. There was a woman that I just saw a video today. She fell and cracked her skull, and they don't expect her to make it. Whoa. whoa, whoa, whoa. Are y'all into these trends, like TikTok challenges, these these social media trends? Would you attempt this one? Hell no. My head is too big, too shiny, and too doggone smooth. <laughs> hit the dog on point. <laughs> Listen, my question is, where the hell is they getting all these crates from? Like, I know y'all just not going behind Walgreens stealing all these people crates. And the one that took me out, did you see the gentrified version of it? It looked like it was in New York and the white girl had went to Crate and Barrel or West Elm. <laughs> <laughs> she had the good crate. She didn't even have the hood milk crates. And the comment was like, we can't have nothing. It's entertaining to look at, but this is definitely dangerous. And y'all, please listen to me. Do not get shot trying to creep behind Win dixie late at night, taking them people dog. <laughs> we are already in a food scarcity situation because of COVID. We don't need them people telling us now they can't stock eggs and milk because you Negroes don't came and took all the crates from behind Win dixie in public. <laughs> need them damn people crates alone and stop climbing up them doggone things because half of y'all that's doing it ain't got no doggone insurance. And you're right here talking about you're scared of a damn COVID shot, but you climbing the leaning tower of crates, dumb dumb. They're calling it the hood. They're calling it the Hood Olympics. I, I think it's I think it's P 
pure brilliance uh, from the African American community. I think this this particular stunt is a combination. But we know that in television, bloopers and what is the, any type of obstacle course that's live, people love it, right? And that's why we can't get enough of this crate challenge. It's suspense, it's reward, it's winners, it's losers, it's pain and suffering. It's all those wrapped in one. And that's why we can't get enough. As crazy as it may seem, I think it's brilliant. It's just dangerous, though. It's dangerous. But very dangerous, but still very, very smart. Very brilliant. We in the black community, we some, we some, we some inventors. We are some inventors. We do some crazy stuff, but you see how it's taken off. I'm liking it. The only part I don't like the fact is that it's unsafe. And we put two dirty mattresses down there. You know, when I was a kid, people used to, when when a house got abandoned, the kids would do backflips off dirty mattresses. Can we at least <laughs> ride, ride oh. safety protocols? Yeah. I, I don't see how it's brilliant. People are out of shape, trying to walk up this thing, falling, cracking their oh, skulls, man, getting the the someone. The someone got shot. Shot. someone got shot. Someone got shot attempting to do it. Like no good can come from this. When the man kicked it, when the guy was on top, and yeah, yes. I saw that. So we have a game, but we're not going to get to it. We don't have time. We'll do it on Friday. But before we go, we definitely want to acknowledge today's a 20 year anniversary of the death of Aaliyah. And lots of people talk about, you know, how big of a star she'd be if she'd still be around. People loved her. She was, you know, a great talent, a beautiful girl and had a budding movie career. She was actually doing her thing. Any thoughts before we go? We got about 45 seconds. I love her. Glad her music is now on streaming platform. I remember I was outside the club Sloppy Joe's when I got the news in college the summer of my freshman year. Um, and I'll never forget that moment. I'll never forget her. Um, and yeah. Al, anything? I just want to I just want to say thanks to the mother and the family for that incredible letter that they that they wrote uh, regarding why they changed where her uh, memorial was. And the reason behind it was because someone made it unsafe. So thank you, family, right. for that note. And we miss and love your daughter. Rest in power, Aaliyah. We, we definitely miss you. All right, I want to thank my co-host, Funky Dineva and Al Reynolds. Thank you for joining us tonight. And watch us in the repeat tomorrow in the chat and on YouTube. Uh, next up, the Tammy Mac Late Show. Stick around for that. We'll see you on Friday. Bye, everybody. Good show.